Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for participating in today's webinar. So the objective of the webinar, as you see in the title, is a, to, to give you a compiled view on uh, LCV trusted evidence-based resources in order to manage the COVID-19 um, information and patients. Some housekeeping uh, before we start, just to let you know that all the participants are muted and uh, we encourage you to submit your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, the Q&A box will be moderated by all the presenters and uh, we will share a recording of this presentation as well as the presentation slides shortly after the webinar. Uh, there is a certificate for this webinar, however, the details will be shared at the end of the webinar, so thank you for your patience. Let me introduce you to the webinar presenters. Uh, we have uh, Sharif Omsi, Account Development Manager for Middle East and Africa Elsevier in Health Science. Lucia Scombi, the Senior Customer Consultant Research Intelligence at Elsevier. Myself, Nadine Iskander, Concierge de Recherche, Elsevier Man Managing French Speaking Africa. Ahmad Helmi, Elsevier Engineering Solutions Manager, covering Africa. And Karen Shamaki, Elsevier Life Solutions Consultant, covering Eastern uh, Europe and Africa. So basically the agenda will cover uh, a small introduction for you to get you in, uh, involved in what we are going to introduce next and uh, literature discovery to stay up to date, global view on the publication trends and discovery of data-driven drug and the latest articles, guidelines, clinical trials, drugs and toolkit sites. At least last but not least the boosting uh, the, in, the engineering efforts to support health systems. So as you all know, the ongoing situation has demonstrated how quickly another disease can spread and even outbreak. So with uh, such events, they are joined by a blast of clinical and epidemiological data and examination. So at Elsevier, we attempt to open all the assets that we can, all the resources that we can to help the public health specialists and analysts, clinicians, all the experts on, in this field to contain and deal with this disease. Elsevier currently publishes 18% of world publications and gaining over 26% of global citations. But Elsevier has expanding capacity to be an information analytics business specializing in science and health as well. And it's, it is our job to help specialists, experts, and healthcare professionals. So to those of you who are working tirelessly to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, we really applaud you and we want to support you, your, your efforts. So we present to you several resources we have made freely available for this purpose. It's part of our comprehensive effort to support our customers and partners across the research, higher education and health communities during these unique and tiring times. These resources include not only our publications available on Science Direct through our many prestigious journals as the Lancet and Cell Press journals or journals published in partnership with elite scientific societies as the, the JACC and the CHEST. As Elsevier expanded beyond publishing to specialize in information analytics for researchers and health practitioners. We have combined our databases and specialized analytical tools such as Scopus, Cyval, and Pure for research intelligence. 
specialized life science solutions as Reaccess, Embase, and Pathway Studio. In addition, clinical solutions for clinical healthcare professionals, clinical key. Our engineering solutions team is tagging along to support R&D efforts on much needed innovations in personal protective equipment, infection control, and medical devices. So by the end of this session, you should be able to utilize Elsevier free access resources to fight the COVID-19. First of all, you'll be up to date with the latest research related to COVID-19 and also get the free access. Then you'll be up to date with the big picture of the research efforts on COVID-19. And then you can easily find collaborators. Also, you'll have the drug discovery efforts enhanced in order to discover data sets generated by our life science solutions. You'll also be up to date with the most updated clinical guidelines and toolkits. And last but not least, you'll have, you'll have the resources for engineering R&D to support healthcare. So to support the extraordinary efforts of the health and research communities combating coronavirus, we have created a range of free resources, including textbooks, evidence-based clinical guidance, and more than 32,000 research articles to read, download, and data mine. This directory you see on the screen, this is a screenshot of the directory you can find when you uh, take this link, copy and paste uh, on your browser. So this directory provides a complete overview of those resources, including healthcare providers, academic researchers, R&D professionals and engineers, librarians and media. We encourage you to visit the directory on the novel coronavirus resource to get access to all of these resources. Also, on the Information Center for the Novel Coronavirus, you will ex find expert curated information for the research and health community on SARS-CoV-2 or the novel coronavirus and also COVID-19, the disease itself. All resources are free to access and include guidelines for researchers, clinicians, and patients. Please also uh, go to this link to go directly to the Information Center on Science Direct. Let's go then to the literature discovery and staying updated. Actually, more than 32,000 documents are freely accessible on Science Direct that provide publications on different aspects of the coronavirus in terms of disease and disease area and other related studies. Please use this link to go directly to the results page. Most of them are by journals like Virology, The Lancet, Virus Research, Journal of Clinical Virology, and other journals as well. You can also set this uh, research results uh, with an alert to have more uh, updates on daily basis from Science Direct when uh, new publications are added to the uh, results of this search. You can have this alert uh, function or option by creating a free Science Direct account. So don't forget to sign in if you have an account or register for a new account to be able to set alerts for this research set to receive updates of newly added documents related to this search results. You can always 
refine your search results by the filters on the left of the results page to include or exclude some publication journals or article types or years of publications. You can see that the search results here, including also publications of years before 2020, which means publications around coronaviruses or one of its implications like ventilation, for example. And they are all made freely accessible here to help researchers have a full picture on the disease and disease area since the beginning uh, until the COVID-19 year-to-date most recent updates. You could also filter to limit the results to the year 2020 to have the results only related to, do, to the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. Among the textbooks made freely accessible on ScienceDirect also are these three books. So please feel free to have a look at them and others in the textbook chapters. You will notice the third book here on the slide is published in 2020. So just a little hint, if your university has an existing subscription to ScienceDirect, you can access Elsevier textbooks for free till the 31st of August. To assist health workers and researchers working under challenging conditions to bring this outbreak to a close, the Lancet has created a coronavirus resource center. This resource brings together new uh, uh, 2019 novel coronavirus disease, the COVID-19. So the content from across, from across the Lancet journals as it is published and all of our COVID-19 content is free to access please consult this link on the, uh, the, the slide to go directly to the Lancet Coronavirus Resource Center. You may want to explore the most read articles in the Lancet and check out the infographics, including this very interesting, I would say, infographic about the efficacy of isolation testing and tracking on reducing transmission, as you see the screenshot on the right of the slide. You could also re register for, to receive email updates from uh, the Lancet COVID-19 content. So back to the um, Information Center homepage on ScienceDirect, when you scroll down uh, on that page, you will find this headline, uh, and that's one of the featured papers published by Lancet. It addresses the ways that could be adopted to handle the surge of COVID-19 patients. Very interesting. Um, publication, please consult this link on the, on the slide to go directly to the full text research paper on health policy. There is also a video if you like to watch it and here is the link between brackets. So not to forget also that you can access by these two links on the right of the slide, the recently accepted manuscripts and the cl clinical guidance provided by the American College of Cardiology, ACC, and the Journal of American College of Cardiology. Please consult these two links to go directly to these two pages. Also, on chess journal, you can access by this link on the bottom of the slide to the updates and resources provided on COVID-19 and the future content most recently updated on June 19th. Also, on cell press journal, you can access by this link on the left of the slide to the updates and resources provided on COVID-19 and you may want to submit your email 
as you see in the orange uh, part of the box on the right of the slide, that you may want to submit your, your email to receive updates on your email from Cell Press Journal uh, on everything related to uh, updates and resources on the COVID-19. So uh, let's now move to SSRN, tomorrow's research today. What, what is it, SSRN? The Social Science Research Network. So SSRN is a platform for dissemination of early stage research. SSRN is a searchable online library that enables authors to post their papers and abstracts easily and free of charge. SSRN is an open access online preprint community providing valuable services to leading academic schools and government institutions. You can access this link to view all preprints and working paper around COVID-19 on SSRN by this link at the bottom of the slide. It is really important to know and to note that these papers have not benefited from the pivotal role of peer review, which validates and improves the quality of final published journal articles. However, you can find the, the preprints uh, and the working papers on SSRN. And uh, to make it clear, preprints are uh, uh, papers that are already um, submitted to the editor but not yet completed the review, so not yet reviewed. However, uh, the working papers are papers that are not yet submitted. So they are posted to get feedback and to contribute to the literature available before submission and review. So uh, on the left of this uh, slide, you can see the top 10 downloads on SSRN for preprints on coronavirus. On the right, you see the most recent working papers that was uploaded uh, on the coronavirus on SSRN. Please consult the link here on the bottom of the page to go to SSRN and discover these two attributes, the working papers and the preprints on coronavirus. So thank you so, so much. And uh, now I give away for my colleague, Lucia Scumbi, to take you through the next slides of global publication trends. Lucia. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, thank you Nadine. I will share my screen. So good morning, everyone. As Nadine mentioned um, in the introduction, I'm the Senior Customer Consultant for Research Intelligence. Uh, what I want to share with you today is um, some of the global publication trends that we've seen since the outbreak um, of, the, of the pandemic. So having heard in the previous session of the literature and the information sources available to researchers during the pandemic, in this part of the session, I'm going to share with you more the, the world view in terms of the research output and there are, uh, that is related uh, to, to, to COVID-19. Um, uh, so this, all the information that I'm going to share with you is coming um, from Scopus data. Uh, Scopus data, Scopus is a source neutral index of 24,000 peer reviewed uh, journals. So as, success, as uh, um, expected, um, and what is usually the case during a public health crisis, is the number of publications surge. And uh, this was the case um, in 2002. Uh, it was uh, with, with the SARS outbreak. It was also the case in 2012 with the MERS outbreak. Um, and it has repeated spectacularly now with the outbreak um, of COVID-19. 
Since the outbreak of the virus, uh, more than 22,000 publications have been published in peer-reviewed journals. Um, so this is not even taking into account the publications that have not yet been published in journals, but are available in preprint pre repositories um, also mentioned. The majority of these papers were published by uh, you, by uh, researchers in the in the US it was only recently over to, they only recently overtook the the Chinese researchers who actually led the research in the beginning um, and it is then followed by the UK um, Italy and Germany as you can see on the screen the published documents are, are uh, used here um, the same set of publications used here to show the most active institutions producing research on COVID-19 um, and the related co coronaviruses. Each pin here represents an institution and the size of the pin indicates the volume of the publications um, on the topic coming from that institution. It is clear to see you know, the concentration of output in the US, China and Europe. Um, this is an interactive map um, so if you select one of the pins, it will show you more information about the specific uh, institution. If you click further, it will also give you uh, information about uh, the specific researchers and you can click through to the Scopus researcher profile, which is available free um, and, and openly. The map is available on the um, Alcevia Coronavirus Information Center, the, the ones again, um, the uh, URL is provided here and it is available um, openly for everyone. Since we find ourselves in Africa and this and the invitation has gone out to our researchers in um, within Africa, it is in interesting to note then what is the, you know, what is the continent, what is that the continent has made a substantial contribution to the research. Um, in this field. Um, so far in 2020, 450 articles have been published, which is more or less consistent with the ratio of Africa's contribution to the global output generally, which is around 2%. Uh, but what is heartening here to see is that the, is that the impact of the research Sorry, let me just go back, that the impact of the research, so you can see the field weighted citation impact here, which is a normalized uh, citation impact uh, metric, um, shows that the, the, the output is 270% more than the global average, where the global average is 1.0. What we also see is that the majority of publications have been published uh, by South Africa and Egypt with 131 and 112 publications respectively. It's then followed by Nigeria, Morocco, Tunisia and Kenya. So this visualization um, is from Cybal and the number of publications per country is shown in the bubbles where the shades indicate the number of times that the articles have been downloaded uh, with the dark green then representing um, the highest volumes of downloads. When you look at institutions, the top institutions are predominantly from South Africa, UCT, Stellenbosch, uh, what is Rand University, University of KwaZulu-Natal, followed by Egyptian universities, um, Cairo University, uh, Tanta Einshams, um, and Tunisia also has a university in the top 10, um, namely Tunis Omanar. From the institutions, um, sorry, let me, yeah. The two top authors, uh, each having published six publications this year are from uh, Mansoura in, in Egypt um, and then from a university in the Congo. Um, looking at the top sources, so where, the, where have these researchers uh, been publishing? The highest number of publications were in the South African Medical Journal um, but what is really exciting to see also is that a considerable number of publications were published in the in highly reputable journals such as Lancet, International Journal of Infectious Diseases, and Journal of Biomolecular Structure and Dynamics. Each of these journals exceed the average number of citations by, by more than 600%. 
64% of the 450 publications coming from Africa were co-authored with international authors. Um, and five articles so far have been authored with non-academic or with corporate partners. Um, and these are coming from C the CSIC, um, the Centers of All Disease Control and Prevention, Genopol, et cetera. If you want to know more about the COVID-19 experts, um, a special portal has been created to profile these experts using the Peer Research Information Management System. The portal is available um, at covid19.elsevierpure.com. Uh, where the experts are organized in various ways, alphabetically, by university, by concept. And the portal also contains data sets which relate to the author's works, um, as well as includes press and media reports. For each researcher in this portal, you will find a summary of uh, his or her publications, um, a fingerprint which indicates the most important concepts that the researcher is working on, this is based on a natural language analysis um, of the publications of the researcher, as well as a list of publication, which includes, um, on the right-hand side, you can see there, it includes the impact of the, of the article, uh, showing the number of citations, but also social media mentions, tweets, blogs, etc., and coming from sources like Plumex and Altmetrics. Another way of exploring the research on COVID-19 is through, on, on the portal, is through this interactive map where the bubbles hold information about the universities and the researchers at that location uh, who have published on COVID-19. So finally, that was a quick overview of the publication output on COVID-19 for the last six months only. Um, along with the tools showcasing the top researchers and institutions. If you are interested to try out uh, the tools that I've shown, you will find them on the Coronavirus Information Center under research. Thank you, and I'll hand back to Nadine. Thank you so much, Lucia. So uh, let's go uh, further with the data-driven drug discovery and life sciences. To you, Carol. Yes, thank you. Hopefully you all can clearly hear me and you can see my screen. Yes, um, we do. Okay, cool. So my name is Karol Homitsky. I'm responsible for Central Eastern Europe and Africa here at Elsevier. Today, I will speak about the data-driven approach for finding therapies, track repurposing, and discovery against COVID-19. So what we do in life sciences department to support our customers? Well, this slide represents a severe scientific content and tools that fuel data-driven decisions for the drug development life cycle. In each step of the cycle, different solutions provide direct access to extracted and carefully curated data, as well as analytics to speed up the process of understanding the disease, biological pathways, the pharmapendium, and support the approval launch, launch or comply with drug safety and pharmacovigilance with embase. And these are just a few example of uses of life sciences solutions that can provide. In other words, the life science solutions provide direct access to actionable data that is extracted from the scientific publications and are put in the tables for an easy overview. As a part of our support to fight the COVID-19, we made the certain data sets freely available to anyone who is interested in research against this disease. The data have been directly extracted from our solutions. This data can be found in the recently launched novel coronavirus information center, to which link is embedded in this slide, where you can find free, up-to-date health and medical, and medical research resources. Just please follow the link that is embedded on the, on the slide. Once you are there, and under the research drug discovery link, you will be able to find free resources for the drug discovery. 
just please follow the circle link and it will immediately take you <clears throat> to the part of the web page that provide access to the mentioned before free data sets that are freely available for you to download. As I have mentioned earlier, Elsevier's R&D solutions for pharma and life sciences in integrate data analytics and technology to help researchers make data-driven drug discovery and development decisions and streamline literature monitoring for pharmacovigilance. Here, we have used those tools to generate information that is relevant to combating COVID-19. And these informations are, for example, one can download a list of 121 drugs and natural products that are successfully used against previous coronavirus infections, including SARS. This list was generated, generated using Elsevier's Pathway Studio. Or a list of 406 compounds that have been reported inhibiting autophagy pathway and their related references, as well as a list of 802 compounds that have activating roles in autophagy. Autophagy is a cellular recycling process whereby cells eliminate damaged, damaged or diseased components in order to regenerate and build new health, healthier cells. Thus, viruses are usually identified and disposed of in this way. Would it be possible to in this, induce sorry, the autophagy process and limit the viral infection by using some substances? Pathway Studio provides this insight. It enables analysis and visualization of disease mechanism, gene expression, proteomics, and metabolomics data. It is an exhaustive resource for easily searchable data from biology articles describing interactions between the molecules, cell processes, and diseases. Another great resource is a list of 393 substances that interact with 25 targets related to six target species, including SARS coronavirus, Middle East respiratory Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, which is a part of our chemistry solution reaxis. It empowers early discovery in drug development with normalized substance target affinity data and comprehensive pharmacokinetic efficacy, toxicity, safety, and metabolic profiles. It is designed to enable users to reveal the pharmaceutical potential activity of substance as a part of a range of in silico modeling workflows. I strongly encourage anyone to visit this part of the novel coronavirus information center to see what is more available for researchers. The other very important resource with up-to-date information is our pharma blog where one can find many interesting articles from our experts. And here I would like to put a special attention on the part of the blog where my colleague, Dr. Anton Yuryev, has published insights on the pathogenicity of coronaviruses and molecular mechanisms of COVID-19. Anton holds PhD in molecular biology and has more than 20 years of experience in bioinformatics. This part of the blog with Anton with Anton articles can be found under the link that is embedded in the slide. Part of the work that he has published are around the development of strategies to combat COVID-19 and visualization of COVID-19 molecular mechanism. It was, it was created using Pathway Studio. Anton has published many parts of his topics on LinkedIn, so I highly encourage also anyone to follow his profile, to which link can be found on the blog website. The other resources and information on how to utilize life science solutions can be found for recorded and upcoming webinars that are published on the brightalk.com platform, where we have dedicated channel to which link is on the slide. A very interesting webinar has been provided by my other colleague, Dr. Andrei Kudoshin, on the clinical and biochemical data-driven drug repurposing for anti-infective drugs. Many concepts 
presented during this webinar can be successfully applied in the research on the coronaviruses and COVID-19. And just to finish my part of the webinar, I would like to mention about, I think, the most important resource we provide to researchers, which is the Elsevier Coronavirus Research Hub. If you, as an individual researcher, are conducting research on coronavirus vaccine, drug, or other related research, then you might be eligible for the free access to our solutions like Embase, Reaxis, Pharmapendium, and others for a limited period. Please go to the link on the slide, familiarize yourself with the solutions we offer, and apply for the access. Each, applica sorry, each application will be reviewed to make sure that your research is related to coronavirus and COVID-19. And finally, we offer a dedicated support to institutions as well. Firstly, I would like I'd like to make you aware about our recent initiative, not directly related to COVID-19, which is an availability of Embase for Research for Life program. Depending on the country you are in, you might be in a group A or B of eligible countries and having a free or a low cost access to a solution. More information together with Embase webinars in different languages can be found on the Research for Life website. The second initiative is a possibility of having extended trials for all life sciences solutions. For this, please contact us directly to discuss in detail the trial construction, eventual success criteria, and needed support in With that being said, I would like to hand over to Yeah, thank you so much, Carol. Um, let's go now to the latest articles, guidelines, clinical trials, drugs, and toolkits site with Sharif Onsi, Account Development Manager for Middle East and Africa. To you, Sharif. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, everyone. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharif Unsi. I'm the Account Development Manager for Middle East and Africa. I'm going to uh, talk to you today about the clinical solutions. But first, I'm going to give you a quick brief about who do we support and who we work with or partner with. Elsevier served new, numerous healthcare professionals to integrate evidence-based content uh, into the care process and help, help improve patient outcomes. We are categorizing them according to their, uh, their uh, role, health executives, physicians, nurses, and pharmacists, and others actually. For health executives, we uh, provide care planning and professional practice services, integrated care plans directly into EHR. Order sets for physicians quickly translate knowledge into actionable orders. And interactive patient education, educate your patients by sharing interactive information wherever they are in the, form, uh, in the format, language, and health lit literacy level they learn best. Then for physicians, there is Clinical Key. It's the clinical search engine that thinks and works the way you do, making it easier to find and apply relevant knowledge. Then comes for radiology, StatDX, developed by renewed radiologists. Um, in each specialty, StatDX provides comprehensive decision support you can rely on. Then comes for pathology, expert path, over 4,000 topics and more than 51,000 expert selected images for quick answers to today's challenges. Then comes clinical path formerly via oncology, improving the outcomes for patients with cancer. Then comes the third part, which is the nurses. Comes clinical skills. It's a comprehensive online solution that enables organizations to standardize education and manage competencies among their nurses. Then comes clinical key for nursing. It's a clinical knowledge solution designed to help nurses to find uh, the right answers at the right time. Then comes um, at the end pharmacist, which is clinical pharmacology powered by clinical key, delivering the fastest, smartest, safest medication decisions. Then I'm going to share with you also the, the slide, uh, which I'm sure that you noticed that this slide is shared uh, a lot previously, but this is the um, novel coronavirus resource directory. I'd like to take you to a quick demo to this site so that you will know more and check more uh, what's available there. Yeah. 
here's the site. You'll find it organized according to academic researchers, starting from the Novel Coronavirus Information Center, the more than uh, 31,000 coronavirus articles on Science Direct, Coronavirus Research Hub, COVID-19 uh, research collaboration, infographics, open source journals. Then comes the health educator and students, and this is the, uh, one of the parts I'm gonna focus on. Let's go to the health education faculty hub. As you can see here, welcome to the Health Education Faculty Hub, Elsevier Academic Resource Center, helping you and your student to navigate remote working using our free content guide and education products. Then comes here the medical education uh, resources, and there's also the nursing education resources. Let's check first the medical one. You'll find here free lectures, breaking down tough to learn anatomical concepts, starting from the cranial nerve, all of these videos you can access. Then comes mini cases, download the mini cases. So for example, let's check this one. This is a case of a 61 year old male with constipation. If I want to download it or print it and share it with my students, I can do so. And as you can see also, you'll find the answers. And of course you'll find the references at the bottom of the page. This is just an example of one of the cases available for you to check. Then let's go back. You'll find also wellness activity to engage remote learners by downloading these images from Letters. And also, if you want to check uh, books for your courses, you can check it from here. And this is the other site I'm going to discuss with you, but give me uh, about 10 minutes and I'm going to uh, reach this point. Let's get back to the nursing part. So this is the medical education. Here's the nursing education resources. Also you'll find free lectures, other mini cases. Coming from clinical key student. Then let me get back again. Then you'll find also uh, questions to download from Rosen Wilson book. And also if I want to download the answers, I can do so. So like a psychological chemistry and process and chapter four of the blood. Also there are others to download here, the chapters itself, cells and tissue PowerPoint, the respiratory system and PowerPoint questions. And also other images to download that will support the remote learning. Then let's get back again. You'll find also use, using our products, like for example, clinical key. Search for the content, tagging and saving, build presentation, finding and curing content to share with your students remotely. And other cases, if I want to check, for example, uh, Viltigo, here it is, a dermatolo uh, dermatology ca a clinical case. And as you can see the question with the answer and also if I want to link it to clinical key I'll press on clinical key link for example or clinical key student these are either the two solutions providing the answers for, for this clinical case it will take me directly to the part that's related to the answer of course if, if you're subscribed to clinical key within your institution you can check more than this and if not you can check the page of the uh, clinical case. Let's get back again. And also, if you want to check quick links related to the uh, clinical overviews of the COVID-19, of course, and if you want to check the patient education, let me take you through one of them. Clinical key for the COVID-19, as, as you can see, it is um, a disease summary concise to your uh, preferences. So I'm checking here, for example, I want to go directly to the diagnosis of coronavirus, novel coronavirus uh, infection. It will take me directly to this part, clinical presentation with the history of the patient, the physical examination that's required, the diagnostic procedures, starting from the primary diagnostic tools. And then comes the laboratory tests. Then 
the imaging. And then comes the differential diagnosis. The most common, of course, is influenza. And there's a hyperlink to check this one also. Common uh, community acquired pneumonia in adults. Then comes the treatment, goals and dispositions, admission criteria, treatment options. So from the navigation bar, you can check everything related to the corona coronavirus in the clinical overview. Let's get back again to the directory. So here, here's the clinical overview. Let me show you the patient education. And this will support me if I want to print it later on to uh, give to the patient to understand more about his or her disease or increasing the awareness within the institution we're working within. So this is the patient education with non-medical terms so that everyone can understand. And even if you find a medical term, it will be in between brackets. So it's just an explanation to yourself when you're reading whatever is between brackets is the medical term. So let's check what's there. I want to print it. I'm going to press print, then create printable PDF. A download will be appearing now. Here it is, the COVID-19 as severe patient education 2020. It's just updated. Starting from what are the causes? Of course, the description of the disease itself to, to explain to the patient. Then comes what are the causes? What increases the risk? Signs and symptoms. How is this diagnosed? How is this treated? Follow these instructions at home. How is this prevented? Where to find more information? Contact the healthcare provider if, get help right away, case of emergency. And of course, the summary itself of all of the above. Of course, you can print this or download it and you can leave it uh, uh, for everyone to check, to increase the awareness of um, the institution that you're working with, people in the institution you're working with. Okay, so this is, for the using the clinical key. So let's get back. Also using clinical key student. You can check the videos to learn more. Webinars, free resources, all of the, whatever is in the navigation bar, you can check it from here. Also other cases. Subscribe for updates if you're interested. So this is also the clinical key student. Then comes the use of complete anatomy. Conducting your anatomy class from home, create a group, share screens, uh, embed or share. Webinars also, top five uh, tips for educators and for students. Then let's get back again. And this is another thing, the Educator Resource Center. So all of the above was educator and student. This is only for educators. Starting from the overview, the background, viral infection, chapters of a Moray and Nadal's textbook, also respiratory support, artificial ventilation. From nuns, applied respiratory. If I want to download the PDF, I can do so of the chapter in the clinic. This is clinical skills mainly for nursing. I'm going to quickly brief you about this. So if I'm checking skill overview, I can check it from here. Learning objective, the introduction. And of course, this is assessment of breathing skill. The introduction, preparation and safety, procedure, uh, ongoing care and documentation and reporting. Then comes the demonstration. There's a video, the equipment that was used within the skill self-test, a test that you can answer, quick sheet starting from the carry out hand hygiene till adjusting the frequency of observation as necessary, then the checklist, satisfactory, unsatisfactory or not performed or you can add your comments and of course the references at the end of the page. So let's get back again. This is a presentation uh, resource for responding to COVID-19 for health care professionals. And this is a podcast that you can check later on. Student insights. I can download it, the issues itself. And health TV networks. 
So this is just a quick brief about uh, two resources for the uh, faculty members and students to support you with the remote learning. Let's go to the COVID-19 toolkit to uh, Healthcare Hub to show you more what you can benefit out of this uh, site. I'm gonna, for example, now I'm gonna click this link. It will open the Healthcare Hub. Here it is. As you can see, the Healthcare Hub is um, categorized according to toolkits, refresher, daily rounds, expert insights, COVID-19 guidelines, and research resources. Okay, so I'll, I'll stay with, I'll start with refresher. So if you're a nurse or a physician or a pharmacist, you can check these tabs as a refresher toolkit. So I'm gonna check quickly the nurse. I want to check the nursing, infection control and prevention. This is the skill of hand hygiene and the checklist I can download. Also isolation precaution, all of the isolation, then assessment, emergency uh, primary assessment and it's, uh, its checklist, pediatric, specimen collection, and so on. Then comes the resp uh, respiratory therapies, mechanical ventilation with its checklist, then home health care. So this is how you can check it. Also, if I want to check, for example, the one for physicians, I'm gonna go to refresher again, and here's the physician's part. What to know, a clinical overview for the COVID-19 as we checked it on clinical key, then acute respiratory distress uh, syndrome, sepsis, community acquired pneumonia, also chapters from books that you can download. All of these books with its title. Then comes what to do, procedure videos. So if I want to check any of these videos, it will explain further about the procedure with a very illustrative view of uh, 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 the physician itself, what he's seeing from his cl clinic while he's, uh, while he's performing this procedure. Then comes the links, American College of Chest Physician, American Association Respiratory Care. All of this you can check and download. Let's go back to the pharmacist, the last one, and the refresher, what to know. Drug monographs, as you can see, then comes also other books available, chapters to download, and what to do. This is also for pharmacy related. So let's get back again to the healthcare hub. So I checked now the refresher. Let's check the daily rounds. Today's top updates, you'll find them all listed here. Expert insights, podcasts from experts that you can listen to related to the COVID-19, of course. Then comes the COVID-19 guidelines, starting from the US CDC, World Health Organization, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, China National Health Commission, Italian Thoracic Society, and so on. Then the last part here is the research resources, health organization. So if I want to check additional resources of WHO, for example, or European Center, or other LCB resources, all of them are combined at the end of the page. As my colleagues were mentioning, the Lancet or Surplus Resource Hub, Science Direct Coronavirus, and also even other publishers, you'll find the resource centers available on uh, Healthcare Hub are provided by Elsevier. So let's check the toolkits. I just scrolled up to check the toolkits and you'll find all the toolkits categorized according to the patient status. So community care, ambulatory care, emergency, inpatient care, ICU, mental and behavior, because I noticed a question here about the mental and behavior health, then physical rehabilitation. So let's check one of them, starting with community care. You'll find them always organized in the same way, what to, what to know, what to do, and what to say. So let's check what to know. This is the clinical overview for the COVID-19. What to do, nursing skills with its checklist. What to say, these are patient education handouts that you can download to give to your patient to understand more about the disease and also you find videos to explain more or share it even with your patients. Then 
and bilateral care. The same thing, what to know and what to do, other nursing skills and what to say. Let's check one of them, chest x-ray. As you can see, a description about the chest x-ray, then telehealth care provider about what are the risks, what happens before the procedure, what happens during the procedure, after the procedure and the summary itself of the handout. Also, if I want to check, for example, the order sets for COVID-19 ambulatory, this is the order set, clinical overview synopsis, the guidance, urgent actions, pitfalls, general care, patient manage at home, assessment, screening COVID-19, all the steps related for the order set of the ambulatory COVID-19 patient. Then comes the patient education also, precautions and so on. Also, of course, if I want to download it or print it, it's up to me to do uh, whatever I want with this handout. Also, let's check one of the skills, for example. Here it is, clinical skill, an alert message, then the overview of the skill itself, then the supplies. If I want to check the list of supplies, I can just select this part, hyperlink, education, assessment and preparation, the procedure itself from the hand hygiene till the documentation in the patient record. All of the steps related to this, here it is document the procedure in the patient record. All of the steps related to the skill will be listed here. Monitoring and care and expected outcomes and even the unexpected outcomes and the documentation itself. And of course, all the references for this skill will be listed at the bottom of the page. Back to home, let me share the last toolkit here. Let's check the mental, uh, mental and behavioral health. I'm gonna press explore, what to know. Clinical overview, generalized anxiety disorder. Clinical clarification, diagnosis, clinical presentation, causes and risk factors, diagnostic procedures, and so on. Major depression disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, substance abuse, drug information, benzodiazepine, let's check one of them. The summary of the benzodiazepine pharmacology. Comparison of benzodiazepine pharmacology. Summary. And so on. Drug interactions and so on. Okay, so this is for drug information, e-learning, and then what to do, nursing skills related to the to the topic we're discussing here. So an anxiety skill, the same thing as we mentioned, overview with the procedure itself, the expected and unexpected outcome, the education, back to home. And the last part, what to say. So you'll find here also mental health screening tools, screening tool for an anxiety interactive, and, and, depression interactive screening tool, patient education, as you checked previously uh, that we opened one of the handouts, depression and anxiety, post-traumatic substance abuse, all of these handouts you can give to your patient with non-medical terms so that the patient understands more about his condition. So let's get back again. And this is the toolkit. The last part or the last site I'm gonna share with you is the Novel Coronavirus Information Center. As you can see, all the links on the presentation are hyperlinks, so you can check them. You'll always find here the Novel Coronavirus Information Center, the date of uh, the starting date, 27th of, uh, of Jan, and the last update, 17th of June, El Severe Free Health and Medical Research on Novel Coronavirus and COVID-19. So starting from the clinical information, or there's actually a part I'd like to share here. You'll find here also, see our directory, starting from the free re, uh, four researchers for the more than 31,000 free articles, as my colleagues were mentioning, 
downloading full text data mining, uh, gain free access of Elsevier biomedical tools for clinicians, for patients, all of these hyperlinks you can check. Clinical information starting from the guidelines, Elsevier clinical solutions, mental behavioral health again, podcasts for global perspectives and transformation of the US healthcare, other guidelines for the new NIH uh, treatment guidelines, or the NICE guidelines, or the CDC. Even if I want to check more, physiotherapy guidelines, laboratory and testing guidelines, drug therapy guidance, all of these are available that you can check and even download. Then comes the mental health part, mental and behavioral health, and anxiety resources, screening tools, also other useful tools from the product of clinical skills, clinical overviews from clinical key, interprofessional care planning, clinical e-learning, patient education, and so on. Then comes the Chinese language, then research drug discovery, journal articles, book chapters, early stage research, SSRN, infographic, and also the articles. And the last part for the public health, new study on economic impact of COVID-19, new test, predictive models for COVID-19 pandemic. All of this you can access actually for free. Also other public health resources from WHO or John Hopkins, CDC. All of this you can check and download later. And also there's a video for complete anatomy of the, um, uh, for 3D, from 3D for medical, one of the anatomy solutions provided by Elsevier. And the last thing I wanted to share with you, if you are actually a, a user of clinical key, and I want to type here, for example, COVID-19 in the search bar, if I want to check the latest articles for the COVID-19, I can just select from the source type and filter journal articles. If I want to check clinical key articles or Elsevier articles, plus whatever is available on PubMed for the same search word, I can select full text and medline. Also the type of article if I want to select previously. And I can specify the specialty of the journal. So whatever the specialty I'm interested in. And also I can check the date of the journal, the publication date. So if I select last six months, for example, the results are gonna be, as you can see, less than uh, that we started. Of course, they are organized according to relevance. So I want to check the COVID-19 and ENT surgery from the Europe European of Ortho, Ortho Laryngology Head and Neck Disease. So all of these journals you can check. I want to check one of them. I just want to share the, the page setup. Here is the full text article with the article title itself. If I want to subscribe for alerts, I can press subscribe. Also the navigation bar, I can check, for example, directly the funding. Back to results, clearing all my filters. And I want to check the clinical trials for the COVID-19. Starting from the, let's check this one. Clinical, uh, clinical characteristics of patient, patients with SARS, COVID-19 infection. I uh, want to check, for example, the purpose, eligibility, context and location, more information. And if I want to link to current clinical trials, clinical trials of gov, here's the, I want to check the study design, the description, here's the design, outcome measures, primary and secondary, eligibility criteria, study population and criteria, context and locations, and so on. If I want to check the guidelines for the COVID-19, I can also select it from the source type. Here are all the guidelines related to the COVID-19. And the last part also, if I want to check the drugs available from clinical key for the COVID-19, I can select drug monographs and the source type. And I want to check hydroxychloroquine. 
here it is the trade name also the description with the pharmacokinetics and mechanism of action then i want to check the indication and dosage starting from the indications oral dosage the administration the monitoring parameters the contraindications interactions adverse reactions classifications and at the bottom of the page the references thank you so much i just uh, conclude i'll conclude that you'll have You'll have here the healthcare hub that you can check for the toolkits as a refresher for physicians, nurses, and pharmacists. Also daily rounds, podcasts for experts insights, guidelines for, from different authoring organizations, and research resources from Elsevier and other publishers. Also, you'll find the directory for uh, the healthcare professionals and educators and students that you can download many cases. And the last part is the novel coronavirus information center that you can check clinical information, public health, patient resources, research and drug discovery. And all of this will be updated as soon as uh, you'll find the update listed on the top of the page. Thank you so much. Back to you, Nadine. Thank you so much, Sharif. And uh, now, uh to the boosting of the engineering efforts, support the health system by our colleague Ahmad Helmi. So to you, Ahmad. Thank you very much, uh, Nadine. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much and thank you for your patience uh, uh, so far. I'm not going to take uh, a lot of time. I'm just going to talk about how uh, the engineering sector and the different engineering uh, solutions can support the different engineering departments within your institutions uh, to boost their efforts to support um, the healthcare system in general and to support you within uh, uh, your work and uh, making uh, the environment that you're working in safer uh, for uh, after the lockdown. So, of course, uh, within the different engineering uh, research and operations for different uh, hospitals, different universities and different institutions, there was a lot of different requirements that engineers had to gear up to and uh, had to understand how they can uh, um, and solve these uh, problems in taking care of, of the engineering side of the uh, coordinated effort to combat the pandemic. So with Elsevier's engineering solutions, we have uh, worked hand in hand with all the different engineering groups, whether uh, they are working within the operations and hospitals or uh, working in uh, the different research departments and universities on uh, advancement uh, and quick response in uh, biomedical devices and microbiology and how to uh, respond to the technology needed to be developed or to, fi uh, to fine tune existing technology when it comes to uh, different parts um, of, of the devices needed for to complete uh, the research on COVID-19. Um, another uh, issue that uh, we worked very hard uh, on uh, was supporting engineers around the world in uh, developing uh, 3D printing for uh, makeshift uh, ventilators, as it, there was a, a huge need uh, for uh, a quick supply of ventilators around the world. So we've created a resource center um, similar uh, to the general Elsevier uh, novel uh, uh, coronavirus resource center that I'm going to show you in the next slide that responded in supporting different engineers with their questions and technical needs for the different standards uh, and access to different standards to uh, either uh, produce 3D printed uh, ventilators or again produce uh, missing parts that they needed in high capacity for uh, existing ventilators. Um, another issue uh, that uh, we worked together and we availed a lot of content uh, to that you can find on the engineering uh, resource center is uh, on the personal protection and health and safety and environment regulations needed by different uh, industries, different plants, and even within hospitals and field hospitals that were uh, made so that uh, engineering directors within hospitals or healthcare uh, facilities and different uh, uh, factories and, and workplaces 
can update the health and safety and environment uh, planning so that uh, to mandate uh, to uh, work around uh, the different mandated uh, social distancing aspects and to make the workers and the workplace safe, uh, especially after um, opening up uh, after the different lockdown uh, is opening up different countries within the expectations of uh, a second or third wave and how to maintain uh, the productivity of the different facilities and healthcare uh, facilities without putting the workers at risk. Another need that we have uh, supported uh, all our different uh, researchers with was uh, more information on medical textiles and the needed uh, regulations for N95 masks and face masks, how to produce them and how to make shift uh, current production lines to actually work with that. Uh, of course, medical material and uh, uh, manufacturing has always been one of the focus, so we're always working hand in hand with our life science colleagues in providing complete solutions to uh, uh, support um, the different needs from the industry to actually uh, uh, produce needed medical material for students. I think one uh, of the sectors that we worked very hard and we're continuing to work very hard was the uh, to support all the education and training uh, uh, institutes, whether within the professional uh, uh, sector and the, uh, in the different industries or within the educational and academic sector, where the impact was very hard as uh, a lot of countries have chosen to complete uh, the school years online uh, during the pandemic and during uh, that the students cannot actually attend physically uh, within the universities. So um, whether you are in a research institute or an educational academic uh, uh, institute, uh, you have access to um, our uh, available resources on the engineering resources for the COVID-19. This is the link and it will be also included in the PowerPoint that I shared with you afterwards. But you can copy the link that is on the screen and you can actually uh, go to our engineering sources for COVID-19 response information. And uh, we've also availed um, uh, also another resource center, one of our engineering solutions called Novel for medical device design, textiles and material where uh, we have a lot of existing manuals, uh, references and different books that can support um, um, the, the different technical needs needed by the engineers to either fine tune the equipment that he has access to or to produce new uh, 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 planning uh, and processes for the safety of, of the facilities. So um, again, to complete, whether you are in an R&D uh, facility or in an academic facility, uh, we are very happy uh, to cooperate with you uh, to actually open uh, our uh, resources for you uh, if needed uh, during the pandemic. And uh, we have already opened our resources for all different research facilities in Egypt. We've opened uh, our uh, different solutions to um, a lot of different research centers across Africa, South Africa and Namibia, uh, where we're working closely during the uh, crisis to avail as many uh, content and as many uh, uh, supporting material and information as possible to the different engineering groups or the different uh, engineering R&D centers. Um, so, uh, one of the main things that I think uh, a lot of different uh, engineers are, are searching for where they're, they're doing, uh, updating their current processes or uh, facilitating the production of new needed devices is the standards and the engineering standards. So, we have Engineering Village to guide you uh, through the different engineering standards needed that, so that you can actually either produce new devices or update your uh, health and safety and environment protocols within the facility. So um, our engineering resource center focuses on uh, giving you access to research standards and books on prevention, uh, preparedness and your response, and of course on the recovery, all from the point of view of uh, the engineering managers and directors and of course researchers. Um, another tool that uh, we have availed uh, for uh, during the uh, pandemic crisis to different institutes upon request was our platform Novel, where they can find uh, um, an enormous amount of information on uh, how to manufacture and regulate um, the manufacturing of different uh, um, uh, PPE uh, um, uh, equipment, uh, including face masks, uh, face uh, shields, and of course the 3D printing of different ventilators and ventilator uh, uh, needed parts that are uh, uh, expanding. So again, not to keep you uh, uh, long, uh, we have a ton of resources available on our engineering response center. 
And uh, if needed for uh, different academic and research institutes, we are happy to open extra material and open extra platforms within uh, Elsevier uh, uh, Engineering Solutions and to provide extra training to your engineers and researchers until uh, the crisis is averted. Um, until then, uh, please stay safe and you have our contacts that you can actually uh, uh, contact us with your requests at any point. Thank you, Nadine, and uh, over to you. Thank you so much, Ahmed. So uh, thank you uh, all so much for participating today. I just want to uh, get you through uh, one more time our uh, research hub. Uh, so uh, I will share my screen now. Uh, Ahmed, if you can stop sharing so I can share. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, when you go to uh, this shortened link, bit.ly uh, slash uh, ELS dash COVID-19 dash hub, and you click enter, you will be on our uh, coronavirus research hub page. And on this page, as you see, you can get access to all uh, the resources uh, uh, on, on the hub by clicking on get access. So uh, you can also see the different uh, resources made available for you to get more information on the COVID-19 or the coronavirus. So for the life science or clinical research, academic government and data scientists. Uh, you can get access also to the best in class tools that we, we've been through today, like clinical key, Embase, SSRN, Pure, Mendeley, Mendeley Data, and all of the others in not to uh, forget Science Direct, Scopus, Reaccess, and the others. So uh, again, uh, go to uh, the shortened link that you see here, bit.ly slash ELS dash COVID-19 dash hub. And then you click enter, you get, go directly on the research hub on the coronavirus. So, and when you click on get access, you will get uh, to the new page to get started, to uh, have all of the uh, uh, next steps to in order to gain access. So you can just uh, put your um, uh, information here, uh, country, role, affiliation, and so on. So uh, again, you can click on learn more for each uh, sector, each uh, uh, solutions on the middle of the page. And you can always uh, reach out to us for more information or to answer uh, any of your questions. Um, I can see that there is no uh, questions regarding uh, the, the presentation content. So uh, I guess uh, that's all for today. Just uh, to make it clear, uh, um, I will be sharing the certificate information and details. Yeah, here it is. So to download your personalized certificate of attendance, please go to uh, researcheracademy.com, uh, uh, sign up if you don't have uh, an account or login if you have uh, already a profile. Uh, just for your info, uh, if you have an account on ScienceDirect or uh, Scopus or any of uh, the solutions, uh, automatically you can use it to sign in on Researcher Academy. Please use this uh, shortened link in order to go to the workshop page or the webinar uh, workshop page to uh, get your certificate. Then, um, uh, yeah, you have uh, to read how to download your certificate file first. Uh, obviously, you will need the code, the claim code, as shown on the screen. And then you download your certificate.
So that's all. Thank you so much for joining our webinar and uh, we hope to see you in our next webinars. Have a great day, everyone. Thank <music> you.